Hey, what's going on guys? Duster Donnie Burke here. Uh, welcome back to another video, another box opening. And first and foremost, I apologize for my voice. Uh, this isn't usually how I sound here today, but um, <clears throat> I got a cold and uh, the voice has been gone since about Monday. Monday was completely gone and that's actually when I got this box. Um, they're going to open, this box I'm going to open today was delivered on Monday. I wanted to open it then, but I had no voice at all on Monday. Uh, it's come back enough that I think we can do the video because I want to get it uploaded and... Uh, and show it to you guys. So today we are doing a hobby box of something a little obscure and not seen too often on YouTube. 2014 Upper Deck CFL Football. And the last time uh, I could find that somebody opened this up was uh, 2000, well last year actually. And before that, like most people opened this when it was new. So a whole bunch of the videos are like from, oh, you know, almost eight years old. So anyway, I saw this uh, for sale on eBay. And uh, after opening a bunch of, uh, I've opened a couple boxes of the latest CFL 2021, 2022 is coming, probably in like two weeks if it actually is delivered on time. You know what, Upper Deck, it probably isn't. Uh, but these were on pretty good deal. I think I paid 45 bucks plus shipping for this uh, on eBay, so that's pretty good. And I thought, well, why not? We'll try a different set of CFL. And the interesting thing about this, actually, is that 2014 was the very first year that Upper Deck actually had the CFL license. Um, before that, uh, about a decade earlier, Pacific had it. They were the last sort of major, like, major card company to have it. There were some people who, there were some cards in the in-between period, but they weren't made by a major company, Upper Deck Pacific, the Grand, you know, Patini, whatever. They were just made by sort of like Canadian companies that just made cheap cards that no one, no one cares about. So first year for Upper Deck, uh, this isn't the first football, Upper Deck actually used to have football licenses up until uh, 2010. I did some Googling actually, I can't remember. It might've been 2010. I'll, I'll look on screen if that's, or I'll put on screen now if it was 2010. But see, Upper Deck lost their license, and you can, if you can look back and see, they had SPX, they had like all the versions of the hockey cards. They still make the actually made football versions of. So anyway, yeah, uh, 2014, just in time for the CFL playoffs, which start this week. Uh, my riders were terrible this year. They're not in it. They're out. It's a nine-team league, and they didn't make the playoffs. Terrible. Anyway, uh, so we'll talk about this set here. Uh, we're gonna get 24 packs, six cards per pack. There are a 180 card base set, short prints of star rookies. They're one in four. There's also defense and special teams cards in here. They're one in one per pack. Uh, there's OPG retro inserts that are one in three. These are, they're like a throwback to way back when some of the very first CFL cards that were ever produced were OPG cards. So there's, that's what those are in here. Um, there's two UD game worn jerseys in here. Some of them are patches, which are numbered to 15. The newer boxes that I've opened are numbered to 25. So it's cool. These are 15. Uh, there's also Grey Cup moments inserts in here. There's two of them. Uh, Darian Durant, Chris Gretzlaff, both who were Rough Riders. So that's awesome for me. And uh, the Riders had actually won the Grey Cup in 2013, the year before this, so they're in here. Uh, and the thing I'm really after is there is Warren Moon and Doug Flutie inserts in here, some of which are autographed. Uh, both Moon and Flutie were some of the greatest CFL quarterbacks of all time, and they both went on to have great NFL careers, uh, especially for me, Flutie. I'm a big Flutie fan because he played in San Diego, and before San Diego moved, they were my team. Now that they moved, I don't really have an NFL team, but I did, and it used to be the Chargers, so I would love to get a Flutie autograph out of here. Um, yeah, it's for 2014 CFL. It was the first year of the Red Blacks. Um, that was the first year they had nine teams in the CFL since so 05. And uh, the Stampeders won the Grey Cup in 2014, led by Bo Levi Mitchell. They beat Hamilton. So, yeah, there we go. So let's uh, open this up, and hopefully we find some autographs or at least some cool uh, game. They don't... Uh, they You get two hits in this. The newer stuff is three hits. The uh, newer stuff is two autos and uh, memorabilia, whereas this was two memorabilia pieces and a chance at an auto. I'm going to try and keep the mic very close to my face. I usually don't like having the mic way up by my face here, but just with my voice being so fried, hopefully we'll, it'll work out and you'll be able to hear me. All right. There we go. Eight-year-old Upper Deck CFL. There's a pack. You got Ricky Ray on the cover there. Fairly simple set. Uh, well, actually, she get some odds here. So I, I mentioned the Grey Cup Moments cards, uh, but I didn't see the odds. They are... 1 in 960, uh, signatures are 1 in 192, so the autographs in here are actually fairly hard to get. Uh, there's some other SP1, SP2 chase cards that are 1 in 960. All right, so there's your base card there. And the overall design, I like it actually. Sort of the design of a CFL card hasn't changed much in eight years. They still have the name on this side. These ones are a touch glossier finish than the new cards, but not a whole lot. All right, so... Got Justin Phillips. This is a, so it's the first year of the Red Blacks. Like I said, they were brand new that year. Cat's attacking my microphone here. Thanks, Cat. 
uh, Andrew Harris, Chad Owens, Josh Bork, Matt Carter, and so there's our first rookie. So that's Jarrell Gavins. And yeah, those were one and three. So rookie defensive back, again, first year on the Red Blocks there. So unlike the modern cards, like the newest versions of this that all have uh, numbered cards in each pack, these ones won't necessarily. I don't know if there's any numbered cards in this set, so we'll find out. All right, it's Dante Marsh. Got to watch my fingers cover up the name. Stephen Logan, the first name is also small, so well, especially when it's written orange like that. Chris Greaves. Akeem Foster. There's our first well, there's, well, there's Darian Durant. It's the Riders QB. Like I said, won a Grey Cup with him in 2013. And then we got Bakari Grant. Unlike the newest ones, like the 22, 21, whatever it is, the... Uh, you don't get numbered cards, so you can pretty much get base packs. I've did, I have gotten the odd base pack in the 2021, but for the most part, they've got numbers in them at least. All right, Shea Emery. There's our, there's our first, uh, first hit technically. First hit, not technically first hit. So that's a UD game jersey of Rick Foley on the Riders. So that's pretty cool. Always like Rider stuff. Congratulations, you received a trading card with Rick Foley game used football memorabilia. Certified, blah, blah, blah. So that's pretty cool, like that. Little piece of red in there. Red stitching in there. So and as usual with Upper Deck, it's nice that uh, they're always game-worn, which is awesome. As someone who doesn't open, like, basketball or NFL very often or at all, uh, when I watch, like, a video of, like, Pac-Man opening something and these they get these jerseys that are not affiliated, it just boggles my mind. Like, what's the point? Who wants a fake chunk of jersey all right so this is probably our first opichi retro so we got rico murray luke broder jordan bo levi mitchell so there you go won the great cup that year and believe it or not sounds like he's gonna be a rider this year which i still is it's just gonna be weird zach kalaros yeah back when he was on hamilton then he played for the riders now of course he's on winnipeg and they're the best team in the league uh brandon whitaker and Will Ford, Rough Riders Retro. So there's what the OPG cards used to look like. Uh, I can't remember what year it is. I'll check and put on screen what year it was when the cards looked like this, or years. That's kind of neat. And of course, a rider, so awesome. And of course, if you guys find this kind of stuff interesting, um, let me know by uh, either commenting, hit the like button, drop a, drop a subscription. Let somebody know you like seeing this weird, obscure stuff opened. I like doing this stuff. Get tired of uh, constantly opening up, you know, Upper Deck Extended Series, which is what the last few videos have been. I love hockey cards. That's my first love, but these are cool. All right. All right. So we got... Now, like, it's hard to... It's actually really hard when they're... The orange lettering is so hard for me to read. Caliph Mitchell, Neil Hughes, Rory Kohler, Nick Lewis. Great career. Uh... <clears throat> Nate Cohorn, Gorn, and Aaron Grimes. Quarterback. There's a there's star rookie, Aaron Grimes. Aaron Grimes wound up having a really good career, too, so there was his rookie card back in 2014. Craig Butler. Neil Hughes again. Rory Colert. Trevor Harris. Another good quarterback. Nick Lewis and Nate Cohorn again. Terrius George, John Delahunt, Siobhan Walker, Clarence Denmark, Drew Tate. And he backed up Bolivar Mitchell back then. He actually, in the years since, became was a starter briefly. And Andy Fantu is on the Tiger Cats. I'm searching for Flutie in this. Flutie's kind of famous for his Flutie flakes, the cereal that had Doug Flutie in the box. And uh, Fantu's also had Fantu's flakes. So, uh... Another serial guy. All right, hope my voice can my voice can power through this here. Box openings are one of those things you can't really start once you can't restart them. Brandon Smith, Brandon Banks, great receiver. John Gott, uh, Brandon Labatt, absolute crowd favorite in Saskatchewan. Brandon London and Xander Robinson. So Labatt's a good, nice card there. Heart and soul of the Riders for a lot of years. Matt Black, Kevin Glenn, future rider quarterback, Travis Lule, Andre Drury, 
Dobson Collins and Will Ford. With the hit being on the back, I'll try to open them so we can't see the back right off the bat. Keith Shuligan, Terrell Sutton, Jack Sander, Jock Sanders, Jock, not Jack, uh, Jeremy Masoli, Jeremiah Masoli, also end up have a decent career. And there's Clarence Denmark and Ryan Smith start rookie. So actually that was two hits in one one pack there. Clarence Denmark and Ryan Smith, wide receiver. I don't think he really amounted to much. Yeah, that's awesome. No C- come on, focus there. No CFL experience. Don't put where he played, like if he went to college ball or what junior team he played for, just no CFL experience. As far as values go on these, I doubt most of them have much value. I mean the any member every memorabilia card of a decent player. There's a second one. So there's a second one. Javon Lafoy, I believe that's how you say that. Javon Lafoy on the BC Lions. They had uh, just straight orange jerseys that year. It's got a nice orange patch there. Right on. So there's number two. So there's the two we're guaranteed. If we get any more, it's a bonus. All right, Kelvin McCarthy and Jeff Keeping. Memorabilia cards usually have a couple dollars worth of value at, at the minimum. Obviously, the better player, the more money they're going to be worth, but quarterback would be better. So, all right, so now we're hoping for an auto or another memorabilia card would be cool. Jaleel Carter, Fred Stamps, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Riley, Andy Fantuz. There's Mr. Fantuz Flakes again. Uh, Bo Bowling and Glenn January. Half done. Got Terrell Mays, Stephen Lambala, Sean Gore, Scott McHenry. Oh, well, that card fell down, but there's Taj Smith retro. So two years with the rider before this, a third year Taj Smith. And who do we drop there? We dropped Simon Rotier. We got Shane Horton, John Cornish. It's a running back, right? Yeah, Russian running back. RB, yeah. Very, very, very good one. He's awesome for the Stampeders. Samuel Jaguer. Courtney, Courtney Taylor. And Dominic Pickard. And John Cornish. Speak of the devil. So you got John Cornish. Retro there. Yeah, he, he used to run rampant on the riders. I remember that. He was very, very good. Most of the opposing team's players, I know them because of what they did to the riders, usually. Kind of frigged up the corner on that one. Well, it was like that when I pulled it out. Bill Willis, Greg Ellington. No, sorry, Greg Ellingson. Rene Paradis, who I believe now is just... This is his last year, I think. He's finally just retiring. He was there forever. Uh, Stanley Bryant, Ricky Ray, the cover boy, and... Shamad Chambers. I do know most of these names, but the uh, font they use and the color. My poor old man eyes just are struggling. Thanks for hanging in there with me and my horrendous voice. Solomon Elamimian. Sean White. Ty Smith. Got a retro of him. Larry Taylor. Spencer Watt. And star rookies of Nick Grigsby. Running back. Grigsby, Grigsby had a decent career as well. I haven't heard his name much in... I haven't heard his name much lately, but he did... So on the back, it does show where they went to school, which is cool. So he's from L.A. I went to Arizona. Crazy thing about the CFL is that the NFL is so talented and so hard to get into that you've got people who have, like, school records, they've got rushing records, they've got whatever, and they don't make it into the NFL, you know, and wind up in the CFL. Which is why CFL is still good football. Because you still have immensely talented guys who just couldn't crack the NFL, and some eventually do, but... It's just so hard to get into it. All right. Ryan Phillips, Mike Bradwell, Luke Tasker, got Thomas DeMarco, Grant Shaw, and a star rookie of Chad Johnson. So wide receiver for the Alouettes. Move Javon over there. The Our pile was getting too big for him. So, all right. Eric Norwood. Well, what? how did I not notice? Wait a minute. What the hell is this? 2010 Grey Cup Pajumbo patch. Um, um, well, that's cool. I didn't even know those were in there. 
manufactured Grey Cup hatch. Huh. That, uh, I was not expecting that. That's pretty awesome. I have to check the pack to see what the odds were of that. When I checked out Cardboard Connection, they weren't even on there. Hey guys, Future Duster Donnybrook here, and this is another one of those weird cards where for the life of me, I cannot find out what the odds of pulling these logo patches was. Um, it doesn't say anywhere on the pack, it doesn't say anywhere on the box, and looking on the internet, I can't find anything else there. I find checklists of it and stuff like that, but nothing ever says the odds. So, uh, And also, the weird thing about this is, for the life of me, I can't find a picture of this card on the internet, which is so weird, everything exists on the internet, but this card either is one of one, which I don't believe they were. More likely, I think it must be a low enough card count that no one else ever pulled it and posted on the internet in eight years. I don't know. It's very weird. If somebody knows uh, more about the set than I do and you know this, uh, throw it in the comments. That would be awesome. But uh, without knowing that, I guess it's just going to have to be a mystery. Well, I don't freaking know. But uh, that is a very, very cool card. I don't know if this is worth anything, but it's super neat. And... Uh, Always cool to hit unexpected stuff, so I think that's awesome. And I also don't remember who won 2010. The Riders won in 09, then back in 2013. I don't remember who won in 2010. I'll look that up and put it on screen. That's the first jumbo patch I've hit ever in any sport. So, right on. We'll take it. We had one card in there. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron Norwood stuck in front of it, and that was it. I wish I wish I knew how. If that was like a something really hard to get, if they're easy to get, but very cool. All right. Armando Sewell, Eric Delorier, Julian Fioli Giardino, yep, Nick Moore, Swayze Waters. Swayze Waters, absolutely the best name in the CFL. That might be one of the best names in football. Beautiful name, Swayze Waters. And Charleston Hughes. Yeah, Charleston Hughes actually played for the Riders. That's right. Charleston Hughes, I think he may be retiring this year. Absolutely awesome Hall of Fame career. Future Hall of Famer for sure. Unbelievable linebacker. Uh, like one of the all-time leaders in sacks, got to be up there. So it's a retro, awesome. That's why you open cards. Hit something cool and unexpected. Great Cup is actually here this year, so it's in here. It's in Regina. Um, Riders, you know, stadium hosting it. So I wonder if 2022 will have something cool like that. And we'll see. Kyrie's Herbert. Yeah. Ruley, Ruley, Ruley at Lumbala. Adarius Bowman. Paris Jackson. Ricky Ray. And Paul McCallum. Oh, Paul McCallum. So, funny story about Paul McCallum. Uh, he was a Riders kicker. Before this, uh, he missed a kick. They lost the game. I don't remember what game it was. It was maybe a playoff game. And somebody in Regina went and dumped a pile of manure on his neighbor's front lawn. Not his front lawn. They got the wrong house, and they dumped a pile of, I believe it was manure, on the neighbor's front lawn because he missed a kick. Sports fans are crazy. Poor Paul McCallum. If you look at pictures of Paul McCallum, he never seems to have a chin. That's why I used to always laugh at old chinless Paul McCallum. Good kicker, though. Great kicker. All right. Charleston Hughes again. Devon Olafoy. So there's his base card of our uh, memorabilia card over there. Marcus Henry. Uh, Craig Coke. Craig Coke. And Kyrie Johnson. And a Sean White. Place kicker for the Elbets. Retro. Let's move our, move our base pile over there. It's... Starting to get in the way. Jamie Robinson, Curtis Steele, Drew Willie, John Charles, Jason Barnes, and John White. So that is essentially a base pack there. Yes, yeah, so you can get base packs in these. No insert whatsoever in that one. Second last pack here. So we've hit our hits, obviously. So this will be just maybe hoping for another rookie. Doesn't look like we hit an auto in this one, but they're a pretty hard hit, actually, in this series. One in 196, I think I read, so... Tyrone Breckenridge, Ben Heenan, Rob Begg, Aaron Kelly, Matthew O'Donnell, and Steve Slayton. So there's our rookie, probably our last rookie. Running back for the Argonauts. Haven't heard his name in a while, so I don't know. His, I don't think he really panned out. All right, final pack here. So let's hope for this one has an auto in it. That would be cool, but I think probably probably skunked on the autos, but that's okay. Got your Marwall, Trevor Harris again. Andrew Harris, back-to-back -back Harris's, Chad Owens, Josh Bork, and last thing is a Mike Riley retro. Now he's a quarterback in BC now. Mike Riley retro. All right, so to wrap it all up, so there's your retro. we got a Mike Riley, a few star rookies. Um, 
Austin Hughes rep is pretty cool. He's a Hall of Famer. That's awesome. Uh, Nick Grigsby also had a great career. Taj Smith, Clarence Denmark. Ryan Smith, I feel like, yeah, I don't think he lasted very long. Fantuz, Flakes. Grimes. I think I'm getting confused with Aaron Grimes with the... Yeah, okay. Yeah, for some reason, my head I was thinking Dominic Rhymes, who's having a fantastic year this year. NBC, that's not him. <laughs> Names Rhymes, but are not the same. Will Ford and Jarnell Garvis, or Jarrell Gavins, who I also uh, don't recall hearing about recently, so he may have never pounded either. And then our memorabilia cards. Two UD Game Worn jerseys of Javon Olafoy and uh, Rick Foley. So, as a Rider fan, we'll always take some Rider stuff. This is the first piece of Rider memorabilia actually I've pulled from. Uh, any of the football cars. So we will take that for sure. And then of course the cool, the coolest, the big hit, I guess. I'm assuming this is a big hit. Um, the Grey Cup Jumbo Patch, the OPG Jumbo Patch. So there you go. So that does it for 2014 CFL. Um, overall pretty happy with what we got there. I think those are pretty, pretty cool cards. Um, if you guys want to see me open another one of these, the seller that I got these from has two more of them. So if you like this kind of stuff, maybe get another one. It's pretty cheap, like 45 bucks plus shipping for a hobby box of anything. It's a pretty good deal as far as I'm concerned, especially with how insane prices of all the cards have gotten. Um, so let me know in the comments section if you want to see another one. I'll happily do it. And uh, if you like this video and uh, my voice didn't completely turn you off and you haven't quit watching the video yet, uh, feel free to hit the bell icon, like the video, subscribe. Absolutely. We're always opening up new stuff. Um, we got what's around the corner here. Well, there wasn't a whole lot around the corner just yet. Uh, I think we've got about a week and a bit for uh, the new upper deck hockey stuff. So we'll open some of that. And 16th is when the new CFL season's supposed to be out 2022. I mean, the season's almost over, but they're almost releasing the cards. Um, so I'll open up a box of that for maybe two for sure. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, uh, thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks for enduring my voice and uh, we'll see you in the next one.